from the station working for you. This is WRTV News at 530, streaming now. Now at 530, we wear them to help stop the spread of coronavirus, but masks may be causing a new medical problem, one you may have thought you left behind in high school. And an indie fourth grader with a big heart, how he's turning what some may consider trash into a way to say thanks to first responders. Topping our lineup, if losing your job once this year isn't bad enough, many people are now losing their jobs for a second time. What employers say the future holds when it comes to even more layoffs. Grocery workers are getting a lifeline as they continue on the front lines without extra pay. How a new national relief fund is trying to help fill the gap. And many people have been trying to save where they can during the pandemic, but the interest rates on some savings accounts are making it tough where you could be making more money instead. First at 530, both Governor Eric Holcomb and Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogsett are keeping the mask mandate in place for now to help stop the spread of coronavirus. Many Hoosiers have to wear a mask all day, and some are developing what's become known as mask knee. WRTV's Kelsey Anderson is working for you with suggestions how to prevent this from happening to you. Mask acne or mask knee is something a lot of us are dealing with right now because we're having to wear these masks everywhere we go, whether it be to work, to the gym, or to the grocery store, making us have little breakouts all over our face. But one doctor I spoke to says there are some things you can do to prevent it. Well, the mask acne is really from just the occlusion of the mask and the dirt and the sweat um, and the oil that builds up underneath the mask. Beth Brogan works at Ascension Dermatology. She says they saw a rise in mask acne earlier this year in healthcare workers. Now I'm seeing it more in teenagers and, um, and younger school age kids who've been wearing their masks to school. Obviously, wearing a mask for a long period of time can make you prone to mask acne. And Brogan says, starting with a clean face and a clean mask are the first steps to preventing it. To cleanse your face every morning with a, maybe a soap-free cleanser or something like that. Uh, maybe prevent um, to the oil and build up, maybe wiping off your face periodically throughout the day if you, if you are able to take a mask break. Uh, for our female patients, I recommend that they not wear um, uh, makeup underneath the mask because that can make it worse. She tells me any over-the-counter products you use for regular acne will work for mask knee, but she says you need to choose something that's mild. Unfortunately, there's no quick fix though, so you should know that any of those medicines that say they're going to be quick are probably not, and you want to use things that are gentle because you don't really want to strip the skin. The governor's mask mandate is set to expire on September 27th, but for now, Brogan says if you wear a 100% cotton mask, it's going to be more breathable and also make you less likely to have those breakouts. Working for you, Kelsey Anderson, WRTV. A breaking news update to a story we brought you at 5 IMPD has found and reunited two children with their family after officers say an 11 year old girl was likely driving her mother's car with her four year old brother inside. Again, both children have been found and are back with their family. Here's Kyle with the forecast. Yeah, and still some clouds out there as we look over Indianapolis, but more in the way of some blue sky this afternoon and those temperatures warming up as a result. Now, at this time yesterday, I showed you this 24 hour temperature change map. And we were talking about numbers running a little bit cooler. The opposite today, we're about five to 10 degrees warmer than this time yesterday afternoon, and that puts temperatures well into the 80s. It's 86 degrees right now in Indianapolis, close to 90 for you in Lafayette. Yet, and we've got 85 on the thermometer with some sunshine in Bloomington. It has been a little breezy today. That west to southwest wind around 15 to 20 miles per hour. There is a front back to the northwest. This will be the focus for a couple of showers, isolated storms here as we go through this evening. Here's a look at Truecast by 8 o'clock. Again, not everyone's going to see it, and it will be pretty brief and out of here pretty quickly. Behind that front, we usher in some much cooler air. Temperatures around 60 by the morning. The journey toward a coronavirus vaccine continues. That begins our news feed. The CEO of Pfizer says the company could have results from a late stage vaccine trial by October. Previously, U.S. officials expected these results around November. 
The deadline for states to set up vaccine distribution sites is November 1st, just two days before the presidential election. But the Secretary of Health and Human Services insists the deadline has nothing to do with the election. Instead, he says it's about delivering safe and effective vaccines as quickly as possible. Doctors are having a tough time detecting when coronavirus has completely cleared from children's bodies. Medical experts at Children's National Hospital have detected antibodies while still finding the virus in kids. That means children can still spread the virus even with antibodies. An infectious disease expert tells us the threat of superbugs is growing. They're bacteria that have evolved so that existing medications no longer work to treat infections. And this is made worse by the overuse and inappropriate use of antibiotics and has become a crisis here in the United States and around the world. That's Dr. Helen Boucher. She says antibiotic resistant bacteria can affect treatment for patients with skin infections or cause urinary tract infections in otherwise healthy women. Superbugs are also well known for their presence in hospitals causing serious problems like pneumonia. That's a big issue amid the pandemic because hospitalized COVID patients may face getting a secondary infection putting them at a greater risk of dying. Boucher says the emerging threat of superbugs has gotten to the point where physicians have had to tell some patients their infection can't be treated because there's no effective antibiotic. And that could mean a denial for an organ transplant or chemotherapy. That is nothing that any of us in the infectious disease business ever, ever want to face. And we know that if we don't continue to advocate and act and really change this problem, that could get worse. Boucher is working with the Partnership to Fight Infectious Disease to advocate for change in Congress. She says people should make sure to take any prescribed antibiotics appropriately and talk to their doctor about how much is truly necessary. More in our lineup. If losing your job once this year isn't bad enough, many people are now losing their jobs a second time. What employers say the future holds when it comes to even more layoffs. Welcome back. An Indianapolis fourth grader is turning scrap metal into cold hard cash and using it to say thank you. Nine year old Hunter Michael Hutchins is on a mission to raise money for first responders. The fourth grader is using his scrap metal business for good, recycling things like aluminum cans and old batteries and turning it into cash. He combined those earnings with his own birthday money to buy snacks for the hospital staff at Franciscan Health. He's already donated more than two thousand dollars but he's not done he's now turning in unwanted satellite dishes poles and chairs his new goal is to raise another two thousand dollars by next week u.s jobless claims fell to 881,000 new claims last week that's the second time we've seen fewer than a million new claims a week since march however layoffs around the country remain elevated in fact alicia nieves shows us some are suggesting that unemployment numbers are about to go back up as more people are expected to lose their jobs for a second time. The United States is at the beginning of a second wave of significant job loss. We're seeing a resurgence in layoff. Daniel Alpert is a professor and senior fellow at Cornell University. Cornell just published a study showing about a third of the people who went back to work during the pandemic now have been laid off a second time. Another 26% of workers have been warned by their employers that future furloughs and layoffs may soon come. The problem is that you get an echo. Right. So if you have a resurgence of the layoffs, you have a, resur a, a decrease in spending that creates more contraction in, in, on the part of businesses, which creates more layoffs. Right. So the question is, when can you put a floor under this uh, spiraling situation? And it is a classic economic spiral. The cycle of job loss eventually leading to more job loss, some fear could lead to a third wave of unemployment in a few months. Experts like Alpert believe the only way to stop the cycle would be a vaccine or Congress coming together on another stimulus package that props up households and businesses until then. We're very concerned about the current roller coaster effect on resume, resume layoffs, but longer term, we are really scared about seeing huge numbers, tens of millions of businesses vanish. The more waves of unemployment we see, the higher likelihood of that. I'm Alicia Nieves reporting.
Next in our lineup, grocery workers are getting a lifeline as they continue on the front lines without extra pay. How a new national relief fund is trying to help fill the gap. Newer safety features could prevent more crashes involving big trucks that tops our news feed. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety found things like automatic emergency braking and forward collision warnings could prevent more than 40% of crashes where semis rear end other vehicles. The systems were also found to reduce damage and injuries. The agency wants them required on new large trucks. Target's car seat trade-in event is happening this year just in a contactless way because of COVID. Starting September 13th, people can drop their car seat at a designated box at a store in exchange for a digital coupon for a new car seat or other baby gear. Spirit Airlines is rolling out contactless technology. The airline is testing using face scanners for passengers to check bags on domestic flights. The technology was planned before COVID as a cost-cutting feature, but it will also help limit touch points and face-to-face -face interactions. Conflict and change are playing out in so many cities in our country, but many hope that in some places, in some ways, we're moving toward a better community. We want to share these stories of hope. Our Amanda Brandeis shows us one group that's successfully chipping away at inequality. Downtown buildings turned into a canvas tell a story of anger and grief. The voices of the young people are being heard and they are uh, speaking out. It paints a story of history being repeated, yet hope still remains. We're getting in good trouble. Leslie Williams spent 20 years building up and believing in the young people she serves. Let them know that you really care about them and being your authentic self, because kids know. <laughs> so they Through know. her church's nonprofit Highland Haven, she wanted to bring wraparound services to families most at risk, expanding mental health services, and creating youth violence prevention programs. The biggest thing for me was uh, health. Um, I've come from a family of diabetes, cancer, heart disease, and that's not talked about in our community. It's not talked about in our culture. With church being the anchor for many families, the women wanted change to begin here, giving the congregation access to preventative services, like cholesterol checks and blood pressure screenings. You never know how sick you are. Um, because it becomes your normal until you go get checked out. And rather make the change inside her one church in Portland, Oregon, Leslie helped build a network of churches now preaching the same principles. You were what we needed because it was in our heart to do it. Mm. But we didn't know where to start. Now, over 2,500 people hear the message every week across the county, learning ways to improve their physical health, manage their mental health, and how to cope with the traumas of racial injustice. We're going to Zoom and talk about the disparities that are going on in our community, how it is affecting our youth. we got to wrap around our arms around the youth. Lessie's effort to create a network of churches earned her an honor from the CDC, an award celebrating those making tangible strides and achieving health equity. Inspirational humbling. While the pandemic has created obstacles in their mission, it's also a reminder of how vital the work is. We always say that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, this village of churches decided we're going to tackle this for our community, and that was the greatest gift. In Portland, Oregon, I'm Amanda Brandeis reporting. One of the fun activities of fall is challenging the twists and turns of a good corn maze. This is what's waiting for you at this year at Connor Prairie. The maze honors the 200th anniversary of the legend of Sleepy Hollow. The 22,160 foot maze depicts a sword wield wielding headless rider leaping out of an open book surrounded by bats in flight. Fancy. There are three ways to enjoy the adventure. The family friendly puzzle maze, a shorter one for the little ones, and on certain nights during the Headless Horseman Festival in October, a really frightful experience trying to find your way in the dark. The maze opens September 26th, and Kyle and I just realized we've never done a corn maze, so uh, we may have to do that. We're gonna have to do the nighttime one, Kyle. Yeah, if you do Ooh, that, hopefully, spooky. you don't bump into the Headless Horseman, right? <laughs> Lose sure, your head. Ooh. All right, well, as we check out the view here, Greencastle and DePaul University, 
Blue sky returning to central Indiana here, a sign of things to come over the next couple of days, and that's allowed our temperatures to get back into the 80s this afternoon. Tonight, though, we do start to cool things down behind a cold front. 58 is where we will start off tomorrow morning, and we will be dry by tomorrow morning. Still a few of those clouds left. Our noontime temperature, 71, will be a little cooler for the afternoon with that sunshine. 77 degrees already in the upper 60s by 8 o'clock tomorrow evening. So if you're heading out for a football game, may want to take that jacket along. Temperatures tomorrow, 78 for you in Bloomington, 75 in Muncie. We do start to warm it up a little bit, though, as we go into the weekend ahead. 82 with sunshine on Saturday, just an isolated chance for a shower or thunderstorm on Sunday. That seven-day planning forecast, yesterday we talked about the models kind of battling it out for temperatures next week. Looks like the warmer will win out here with highs in the 80s for Labor Day and beyond. Grocery workers continue to be on the front lines during the pandemic. More than 14,000 of them have been infected or exposed to COVID-19, and more than 100 have died. The union representing those workers continues to call on the White House and all elected leaders to support hazard pay. Stores gave that hazard pay early on in the pandemic, but it's not happening anymore. A Kroger spokesperson tells us they've invested more than $830 million to reward their associates and safeguard their associates and customers. They recently gave workers a $100 store credit and gas points. They also have a fund that provides financial support to their workers experiencing hardships because of COVID-19. Albertsons, Safeway, and Publix didn't return a request for comment. United Way and Kendall Jackson are now teaming up to get grocery workers more help through a national relief fund they've created. What we have seen across the country in other disasters, natural disasters, is that initially there's this outpouring of support um, and people want to donate, but then it really starts to wane and lag just as the needs are starting to get even bigger. The Grocery Workers Relief Fund will be available to anyone currently employed by a grocery store. The fund will be giving out $250 per person on a gift card. Anyone who applies will be connected with the 211 Social Services Helpline in their area to see if they have any other needs as well. United Way says housing insecurity is one of the top issues people are calling 211 about right now. Mental health has also become a much bigger concern among the people who are calling. While well, people might call for you know, financial assistance, our call specialists who are trained, as they start to enter into dialogue, they do discover that there's more, more there, that the person might have anxiety, they might, have, might be in a domestic violence situation, or have um, very serious mental health issues. Grocery workers can start applying for the relief fund on October 1st at unitedway.org slash grocery relief. If you would like to donate to the fund, you can do so through that same website. Here's a look at the news feed. The U.S. trade deficit hit the highest level in 12 years this summer. It reached $63.6 billion in July. The Commerce Department reports that there was a record increase in imports in July as well. Dozens of hospitals are deciding whether to use plasma from recovered COVID patients to treat the disease or to use it for a clinical trial instead. Vanderbilt is sponsoring a controlled clinical trial looking at convalescent plasma. Some hospitals have committed to only the clinical trial. Tyson Foods is trying to protect its workers from coronavirus. It plans on opening medical clinics at several of its plants, and those clinics will open next year. The pandemic has caused delays in movie productions, and now Pinewood Studios in Atlanta is turning to a tool used in The Mandalorian. It's bringing in an LED stage like the one used in production of the Disney Plus series. The LED stage immerses actors into video walls that creates a seamless background that looks like a real location. Walmart is already looking ahead to Christmas. It has created a workaround for toy shopping called the Walmart Wonder Lab. It allows kids to virtually unbox toys and play with them since they can't try them in stores. Walmart has already shipped more toys to warehouses because it anticipates more people will be shopping online this year. Finally in our lineup, many people have been trying to save where they can during the pandemic, but the interest rates on some saving accounts making it tough where you could be making more money instead.
Americans are trying to form better financial habits in light of the recession, building emergency savings and paying down debt. But many are finding savings accounts are now returning next to nothing in interest. That's because of the Federal Reserve's decision to keep interest rates low. Rates that were over 2.5% a year ago are now down to 1%. But there are some accounts that can get you a better return. Something known as a rewards checking account might be a better option. Uh, these are accounts that typically pay uh, higher yields, even than high, higher than even the online savings accounts. You might find one and a half, two, two and a half percent, but you have to meet certain qualifications each month or, or to earn that yield. Rewards checking accounts typically are offered by smaller community banks and credit unions. They usually come with monthly requirements like direct deposit, online bill pay, enrolling in e-statements, and using your debit card a certain amount of times, but those are things that many people already use. In terms of saving versus paying down debt now, experts say to save for sure. That's really critical. I mean, nobody really knows what's going to happen down the road uh, in terms of jobs or, or income. Having some money put away is going to help you sleep at night. Just to give you an idea, you could make 30 bucks by saving around $1,000 a year at 3% interest rate, which a rewards account might pay, compared to just 60 cents in an average savings account, which only has about a 0.06 interest rate. Experts say billions of dollars have been saved by people working from home. Tomorrow, how people are spending that money and how it could play a significant role in reshaping part of our economy. Sunshine and in the 70s tomorrow. After that, though, we bounce back into the 80s for those highs Saturday and Sunday. Just that isolated chance for some rain. Looks like those rain chances will get back in here as we go toward the middle of next week, bringing in cooler air by Thursday.